guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Today we're talking about <laughs> succubus. All about succubus today. So if you've ever had a dream where you saw a beautiful woman, this person seduced you and you had intercourse with them and it felt so real, felt amazing to the point where you literally had a wet dream and or orgasm, you encountered a succubus. You were sexually assaulted by a demon. The thing is, 99% of the population believes that these dreams are normal. Not only that, some of them actually like these dreams, they enjoy it, they think it's a free good time. There are spiritual consequences to allowing these entities to have their way with you that most people are completely clueless about. So today, we're gonna dive deep and find out what exactly these things are and how to protect ourselves. Let's get started. So what exactly is a succubus? So a succubus is a parasitic sexual demon of the night. So what these things do is they visit you in your dreams and they choose a form of either a super attractive woman or a super attractive man, depending on what you like. And these things know exactly what you like because they're constantly observing you. 24 seven, they're watching who you're checking out. They even know who you're creeping on Instagram. So they know who your crush is, they know what your type is, they know how to talk to you, you know, they know how to spit that game. Because they've been around for thousands of years and on top of that, they observe you all the time. So they see what works and what doesn't with you. And a lot of times they're gonna use forms that you trust. So these are people that you know in real life, they're gonna use those forms to kind of reel you in. Be like, oh, I know this person from my work. Oh, I know this, I know this person from the gym. I know this person from whatever. But the thing is, you don't know this person. That is not that person. This is a trap. And once they got you in that trap and you get, you get close enough to them, they're gonna use their sexual arousal powers to have sexual intercourse with you. And the thing is about having intercourse with these demons is that it's not in your head. Even though you're dreaming, the intercourse feels real because it's actually happening, all right? And while it's happening, these things are stealing your energy. They're stealing your, your sacred sexual energy. Much like a mosquito is sucking your blood and you can't feel it because of the numbing agent, the sexual arousal is sort of like their numbing agent. You can't feel that they're, you're, they're taking your sexual energy because you feel so good. So how exactly are they making you feel so good anyways? Well, these demons, they got crazy demonic magical powers. They can quite literally manipulate energy to mess with your libido. They'll spike your libido up like crazy so you feel really good, you feel very sexually aroused and this masks what they're actually doing. They can quite literally just touch you and make you orgasm. That's how powerful these demons are. So why the sexual energy? Why are they feeding off sexual energy? That's because sexual energy is the most sacred energy we harness in our body. Sexual energy is so powerful that it literally brings forth life, i.e. children. See, the sexual organs, where are they located? They're located at the sacral chakra. Sacral, what's the etymology of that word? Sacral stems from sacred, the sacred chakra. Demons know this. Demons will do whatever it takes to take this energy from us. So what do these things look like? So in the physical realm, they look like shadow people. So it's gonna look like a human, but it's just a shadow. We're kind of not gonna really see any features and they'll sort of like float on top of their intended victim, essentially sitting on them. And when they're sitting on them, they're inside their dream, they're doing whatever, and also at the same time, feeding. And the thing is, let's say like you randomly wake up while they're feeding. These things are lightning fast. So as soon as they, they sense that you're waking up, they'll be right out. You will never see them. Now, in the spiritual realm, so let's say they're in their actual form, their default form, we'll call it. What they look like is an extremely attractive woman with bat wings, with talons and claws, sharp teeth, long, sharp tongue, a tail with a point and piercing eyes. 
like I said, master seducers. So they got those eyes that are just gonna reel you right in, right? These photos are based on actual fact, based on, on truth. This is what succubus actually looks like. So what are some signs and symptoms that you encounter a succubus slash incubus? Well, obviously you're gonna have a wet dream and or orgasm. This is one of the more obvious ones, but you're also gonna feel fatigued. You're gonna feel brain fog, so you're not gonna like think clearly. You're gonna have bad luck, so you might be more accident prone. You might, you know, slip and fall. You might have a car accident. People are gonna be more cranky with you. So you might be going to work and then people are just like giving you attitude. And you're gonna be more prone to sickness. Now as far as the really bad cases, so this is, this is rare, okay? This doesn't happen too often, but it does happen. So succubuses and, and incubuses, they fall in love. You know, demons gotta to love too, right? So when this happens, this is known as a spiritual spouse. And these demons, they get jealous. They don't want you to have relationships with other people. They don't want you to have kids. So what they'll do is they'll literally mess with your sexual organs so you can't have kids with other people. And let's say you can still have kids, they're gonna cause you to have miscarriages. So succubuses can actually possess you. There's two forms of possession. There's acute and then there's chronic. So when it comes to acute, this is when you're extremely aroused out of nowhere. This isn't normal arousal. I'm talking like, this is animal-like. Like you're an animal in heat. Like you can't think of anything else but to orgasm. And this is gonna occur in an inappropriate time. So this can be like you're in school. Maybe you're at work. Maybe you're at church. This is not normal. This is demonic. You're being attacked by a succubus when this happens. So it could be an inappropriate time. It could also be while you're sleeping. So you could be peacefully sleeping and all of a sudden at 3 a.m. You, you wake up and you're super sexually aroused. And once again, it's animal-like and you don't have control of it at all. And if you have a partner, you have to have intercourse. If you don't have a partner, you have to self-pleasure. This isn't normal. This is a succubi possession when this occurs. I wanted to ask you guys something. Have you ever wondered why sexual arousal is known as horny? Think about it. How do you get horny from sexual arousal? If you look up the definition of horny, it's to have horns. So what's a chronic possession? So a chronic possession is when an incubi or a succubi possesses a person and it's a lot more subtle than the acute possession. So it's not gonna be noticeable to them or to other people around them, but it is happening and it does affect them negatively very much so. So in terms of women, if she's promiscuous and has a roster of men that she rotates for her pleasure, that's a sign. If she uses lust and sex in exchange for money, that's another sign. Because what is money? Money is just another form of energy. Right? And when you're exchanging lust and exchanging sex for money, you're essentially doing what a succubus does because what does succubus do? They are using lust and sex to take energy. That's what these women are doing when they're exchanging their lust and sex for money. And another sign is they don't view men as people. When it gets to the point where they don't view men as people and they view them as prey, literally as food, that woman is viewing men no differently than a succubus views a man. So what about the man? What are some signs that a man is possessed by an incubi demon? If he has a roster of women that he's rotating for his pleasure, that's a major sign. Because he's using his lust and his charm to get these women in bed, get what he wants, and then he ignores them. Essentially, he's treating them as objects of pleasure. He's taking the human aspect of these women and using them for, for his pleasure, really. Because what is sex? Really ask yourself, what is, what is sex? Sex is sacred energy exchange, all right? What does that mean? That means 
when you have sex with someone, you're literally exchanging energy. It's a give take. And these guys, all they do is take. You know, they're, they're gonna see a woman that they're attracted to, not just physically attracted to, they're attracted to them on an energetic level, just subconscious. Or sometimes they might be aware of this reality and wanna take their, their energy if they're really messed up dudes. So <clears throat> what they do is they'll, they'll sleep with these women take their energy, drain their energy from them, and then ignore them. He literally did what incubuses do. Because think about it. Ask some talking to the women right now. Think about your life. Whenever a man is coming to your life, where he's charming, he's good looking, he has everything that you want, he sleeps with you, stops talking to you. How does that make you feel? It makes you feel sad, depressed, drained just like what an incubus does in real life they drain you of your energy these guys are possessed these playboys these you know these red pill dudes like Myron Gaines from Fresh and Fit talking about how men need to sleep with 50 women before they settle down that is bull guys that is pure deception that you know this guy is influencing this the next generation to think this way this is toxic and complete nonsense. On a separate note, just because someone has these traits on, on both genders doesn't necessarily make them bad people. They are people with, with demons, just like the rest of us. You know, I can think about my life. Before I found God, I was one of these dudes. I had a problem with fornication. You know, I can openly say that because I have nothing to hide and I want to help people. So if you know if you know someone that's like this, you know, don't mess with them obviously, but don't judge them either. Cuz inshallah Lord willing, one day they find God and he delivers them from these things, from these demons. Guys, if you're enjoying this video and you're and you enjoy watching content where you get nothing but the truth, please like, comment, and subscribe. I put a whole lot of research into these videos and then damn, damn trying to help people. So thanks a lot. Thanks for your support. So where exactly do these demons come from? Well, succubus incubi, they're born from lust. So if you're watching porn, that's gonna open portals for these things to come through and wreak havoc in your life. Porn is the number one way these things come into your life. So obviously we all know how rampant porn is. So you can just imagine how, much, how many succubi incubi are out there feeding off people. Promiscuity can also attract them into your life. So the people that you have sex with, as I mentioned earlier, you two are exchanging energy. But when you exchange energy, you're also exchanging demons. So if they have succubi or incubi attached to them, they're gonna attach right to you too. Even if someone touches you so even like a simple handshake or a hug anything like that can transfer these demons or any sort of demon onto you as well you know we have to be really cognizant and aware of who we're dealing with you got to use your discernment does this person give me bad vibes does this person have like a darkness to them because if they do don't touch them and self-pleasuring so if you're self-pleasuring, especially self-pleasure on the regular, you're attracting these demons because they're feeding off of your, your sexual energy. Witches can also conjure these demons and send them out to torment you. So they literally have rituals and spells to summon the demon to do their bidding. Witches can also astral project and go visit their victims to incite lust and also steal their energy like a succubus so witches are actually so, there's some witches out there that are so messed up they're so, so crazy that they'll conjure an incubus to be their their boyfriend their spiritual spouse on purpose and a little fun fact i'm gonna throw in there that's a pr little disturbing i'm not gonna lie is that incubi are bisexual so they will literally have anal sex with yeah, we're super messed up. You have to realize, guys, that whatever happens in the astral realm, i.e. in the dream realm, 
correlates with what happens in the physical realm. So for example, obviously succubus, incubi, they can give you wet dreams. They can give you orgasms. They can also give you scratches, bruises, if it's really bad, or right? if they're seriously essaying you. They can do that as well. There's also some demons that can kill you in your sleep, okay? You ever hear about those people that have heart attacks or they, they, they die from not being able to breathe while you sleep? What do you think that is? You know? And Hollywood has made references for a long time about this. So if you guys remember the movie Nightmare on Elm Street, where, you know, Freddy Krueger, the main antagonist, the dude with the scissor hands, he goes into these kids' dreams and literally kills them in super violent ways. There's some truth in this. Okay, obviously that movie is a huge exaggeration of what actually occurs, but sometimes, especially the powerful ones, these powerful demons, they can hurt you in the real, in the real world through your dreams. So, once again guys, we gotta we got get God's protection out here. You know, and that takes me to the next subject. How do we protect ourselves from these things? First off, we have to have a relationship with God. So, I know I sound like a broken record here, uh, with all, every single video I bring this up because God literally is our number one way to for anything in life for money for protection from evil for love all that stuff okay so we have to pray to him as often as possible we have to have an active relationship try to refrain from sinning i.e. sexual sins and then he's gonna send his angels to protect us while we sleep okay so that's the best way to protect ourselves Anyways, thank you so much for being with me today. I really hope that you guys take uh, knowledge with you. It's going to help you throughout uh, in your life. And uh, yeah, peace. Mm -hmm.